Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson in sketching techniques. In our last lesson, we have seen the use and application of freehand sketching and identified the freehand sketching materials along with how to use them. Let us briefly revise them. Technical sketching is used to quickly put new ideas, usually new designs, on a paper. Technical sketching is also used to communicate between professionals. The use of technical sketching is classified into three, as to graphically represent technical data, to draw a two-dimensional view of any object, and to illustrate a three-dimensional view of any object. We have seen the use of different type of pencils and paper for sketching purpose. We have also seen how the sharpening of a pencil affects the weight of a line you are making. In today's program, you will learn some techniques to sketch different types of lines, angles and circles. You'll also learn to apply sketching techniques to lay out a sketch using proportion. To make your sketch good, your lines shouldn't be uniform or straight. But the freedom and variety of lines determines your sketch's quality. Let us see some techniques of sketching now. While sketching, hold the pencil loosely. Your fingers should lie farther from the pencil tip than the normal writing. Eye-hand coordination and muscle control are important, but it comes with practice. During sketching short lines, use finger movement keeping the wrist stationary. When sketching longer lines, use less finger action with a stiffer arm movement. Whenever possible, sketch lines in a direction away from the body. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Let us practice this sketching techniques. Sketch the following drawing with the same techniques you have just learned. The notes given will remind you the techniques.
Good. I'm sure you have done a great job. Remember, the key word when sketching is relax. Avoid holding pencils as if you are writing. Knowledge and skills of sketching are easily transferable to other objects and the benefits are immeasurable and permanent. Let's see some other techniques now. As you sketch, rotate the pencil slightly between the thumb and fingers. This helps to preserve the sharpness of the pencil point and to make uniformly thick lines. Avoid fastening the paper to your drawing board or table because the freedom of movement is necessary while sketching. Final lines on a sketch should be bold, dark and clean cut. Straight lines should be drawn with minimum waviness. Avoid using rugged overlapping strokes. Lines refer to a long and continuous trade with a consistent width while strokes are comparatively short and broken lines in a variety of widths. In sketching, line is used to define edges and describe objects. Let's practice the techniques we have seen and don't forget the first four techniques either.
Well, was it successful? Especially, you have to practice on the straight lines. Whether it is vertical, horizontal, or inclined, straight lines are hard to get them right on the first trials. Let us see some techniques focusing on sketching straight lines. While sketching straight lines as a beginner, it's recommended that you follow the following steps. First, mark the end points. Second, make a few trial motions between the marked points to adjust the eye in hand to the line which is going to be drawn. Third, sketch a very light line between the points by moving the pencil into or three sweeps. When sketching the trial line, the eye should be on the point toward which the movement is directed. Fourth, darken the finish line, keeping the eye on the pencil point on the trial line. The final line, replacing the trial line, should be distinct, black, uniform and straight. A straight lines can be horizontal, vertical or inclined. Each of them needs their own skills to be sketched in good condition. Being a right-handed or left-handed has also its differences on sketching skills. While sketching horizontal lines, it's best if you draw the lines from the left to the right for right-handed people and from right to left for left-handed people. Vertical lines are usually drawn from top to bottom with only finger and wrist movements. To sketch horizontal or vertical lines, you can use your paper's edge or drawing board's edge as a reference. When you sketch inclined lines, you can pretend them to be vertical or horizontal lines by rotating your drawing paper on your drawing board. You should also be able to develop a skill of uniformly spaced parallel lines because it will be handy, especially when you are rendering an object. The following activity will let you start to practice on a straight lines. Get ready.
Good. One of the first application of sketching vertical and horizontal lines is drawing a border line. Let's see the basic steps to draw a border line on your drawing paper. In order to sketch your drawing board as a beginner, follow the steps shown on this video. First, begin by aligning the edge of the paper with that of the board. Prevent the paper from slipping by one hand while holding the pencil firmly by the other hand. Second, use the idle fingers of the hand holding the pencil as a guide against the edge of the board. Third, then slowly sketch the line pulling the pencil toward you. In sketching border line, we do not need to sketch the trial line. Instead, produce a final bold line at the first stroke. Border lines are used as a frame for your drawing. You must not draw outside of your border line. Sketching curved lines is a whole lot of different thing than sketching straight lines and strokes. Let's see some techniques of sketching circles and arcs. To sketch a circular shape, first draw a horizontal and vertical construction lines that intersect at the center of the desired circle. Estimate and mark off the radius distance from the center point on each side of the center line. Sketch each quarters individually. Darken the final circle and change the construction lines into center lines. To sketch a larger circle, we need more center lines to increase the number of marks of the circle's circumference. But if the circle is even larger, we need to sketch a square around the circle first. Sketching arcs is much similar with that of the circles. To sketch an ellipse, hold the pencil naturally, rest the weight on the upper part of the forearm and move the pencil rapidly above the paper in the elliptical path desired. Or, we can draw an enclosing rectangle, then mark the midpoints of the sides and sketch light tangent arcs. Well, students, I'm sure you can manage to apply these techniques in your future sketches, including the following activity. Don't forget to use the basic techniques of sketching and the techniques to draw a straight lines too. Teacher, please assist your students in their need.
That wasn't so hard, was it? What if we need to divide a line into an even number of equal parts without using drawing an instrument? In sketching, we need to develop the skill of estimation. Estimation is an approximate guessing. To divide a line into an even number of divisions, first we estimate the midpoint of the line and then we estimate the midpoint of the two halves and so on. The same basic concept works in dividing a triangle's area into equal divisions. The midpoint of a rectangle is the point of intersection of the diagonals. A sketching a vertical and horizontal lines through that point will divide the rectangle into two or four equal parts. A special construction method is followed in dividing a rectangle into smaller but proportional rectangles as one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth of the side of the rectangle. The principle of estimation is not only used in dividing lines and areas, but also for angles. Dividing an angle requires the skill of the straight lines, arcs, and also the skill of estimation. A 90 degree angle can be approximated by sketching two nearly perpendicular lines. To sketch a 45 degree angle, sketch a square and connect its opposite corners. To sketch a 30 degree angle, sketch a square and an arc inside the square. Then, divide the arc into three equal parts and connect the division points to the vertex of the angles. A 15 degree angle can be approximated by dividing a 90 degree arc into six equal parts. Good. I'm sure you'll practice the sketching techniques of dividing an angle after this lesson. In sketching a large object, it's an obvious fact that we cannot sketch it in its original size. As shown in this video, a sketcher uses his pencils to compare various distances of the object from his stationary point. The distance between the tip of the pencil and the thumb defines the dimensions of the part of the object from his viewpoint. You can transfer various distances of the object into your paper, but do not forget to keep your stationary position and to hold your pencils at arm's length. The techniques of that we have learned today help us to communicate technical ideas by translating thoughts into pictures. Let us briefly revise the techniques that we have learned before we come to the end of this lesson. In today's lesson, we have seen the techniques of sketching. In techniques of sketching, we have seen how to use our arm and finger to hold a pencil and draw long lines and short strokes. We also practiced drawing circles, arcs, and ellipses. We used the skill of estimation to divide line, triangle, rectangle, and angles. Finally, we have seen how to keep the proportion of the object to be sketched. Well, students, that brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to practice the exercises from your textbook. Teacher, please check the students' activity in their practices. In our next program, we will see the techniques of sketching 
in multi-view and pictorial drawings. Until then, thank you teacher, thank you students, and goodbye.